The broadcast is now starting. All attendees are in listen-only mode. Hello, everybody. This is Jennifer Schaus coming to you live from Washington, D.C., and thanks for joining us in our webinar, web webinar Wednesday series. Today is a double header. We just wrapped up a 12 o'clock webinar covering GSA schedules. And this afternoon, we are now talking about steps to success for government contractors. Uh, some of this may be a little elementary, the first couple steps, but hopefully you'll learn some new resources and tricks uh, that can hopefully help accelerate your sales and business development process. Um, all of our webinars on Wednesdays uh, bring in a variety of industry experts. This ranges from accountants to attorneys and other business professionals that are sharing their knowledge about the sector. The full schedule of webinars is on our website. Uh, next week we are covering, uh, which is the 16th, Hub Zones. Uh, the week after that, which is May 23rd, to bid or not to bid. May 30th, uh, we are covering CPARs. And uh, the full schedule, which actually is um, completely booked through the end of December, again, is listed on the site. All the webinars are recorded. You can find those on our website under the archive webinar section or on our YouTube channel. Uh, a little bit about us, we are based in downtown D.C. and provide professional services for both product and service companies that sell to the government. Uh, services range anything from market analysis reports to GSA schedules, some of the certifications, uh, compliance, and more. A little bit more about us can be found on our website. Uh, I do have a little bit of experience in government contracting. I've worked for companies. Uh, in the sector, uh, both large and small, and our client base is fairly diverse as well. So today we're going to talk about steps to success, primarily uh, geared towards beginners, but again, there is uh, sometimes always something new that you can learn from this. The slides and the recording will be available later today. So some of the basics here, you first want to establish your business um, as a legal entity, uh, secure your tax ID number with the IRS. We'll go through some of these pretty quickly. Next, you want to ensure that you've gotten uh, your DUNS number, which stands for Dating Universaling Numbering System. Uh, one of my very first employers, I worked for Dun & Bradstreet about 20 years ago and was in their government division, and we were selling data to uh, the federal government agencies for a variety of reasons, uh, uncovering money laundering um, uh, issues, as well as evaluating contractors for potential uh, award, both a GSA and just uh, regular contractors. Uh, this DUNS number uh, is important, and this is a uh, sequential step-by-step um, -step process, so you will need your DUNS number to then successfully register in SAM, which is System for Award Management. Um, later this year, a lot of systems that we're going to reference here today will be migrating over to SAM. It's very important to take note of this. Uh, FPDS, uh, FedBizOps and, and some of the others that you may be using are all going to be migrating to a, a new and enhanced uh, SAM platform. So you want to make sure that your business is registered there with SAM. Uh, you will indicate whether you are a small business or not. Uh, we do uh, suggest as a best practice that you update this twice a year and that you have multiple contacts within SAM. Um, the downside to sometimes being registered in SAM is then you'll be inundated by commercial companies trying to sell you uh, proposal services, GSA schedules, and everything under the sun. Um, just keep an eye if their email address ends in .com or .org or .net or something other than .gov, they're probably trying to sell you something. If it's .gov and you want to pay attention. Uh, within SAM, this is still continuing step number three. Uh, identifying if you are a small business. Well, how do you know if you're a small business? The SBA website uh, and your NAICS code will help you with that. Um, so your industry code then will either be based on the revenue or the number of employees. So this example here is based on employees. Uh, these are obviously some utility type um, sectors. And then uh, some other industries are based on your actual revenues. Next, you want to make sure that you get a CAGE code. That's the Commercial and Government Entity, uh, DLA, Defense Logistics Agency, is the organization that will issue that CAGE code. What is a CAGE code? It's um, similar to a DUNS number, 
uh, in that it's an identifier, but it is used more for uh, payment by uh, primarily DOD and sometimes uh, DOT and NASA. Uh, it's also an important thing to put on your capability statement, which we'll talk about uh, momentarily. Some of the organizations, if you're just getting started, uh, in every city and every state across the United States, you will have access to a procurement technical assistance program or procurement technical assistance center, uh, referred to sometimes as just the PTAP or the PTAC. There's a great one. Island Virginia, run by Anna Ehrman. They have a variety of locations. There's one in downtown Washington, D.C., which is, uh, I believe, co-located with the D.C. government. And there's one in Maryland that's headquartered out of the University of Maryland. Uh, I teach some classes here. Uh, they also do have one-on-one -on -one mentors and various events, sometimes matchmaking events. I get on all of their mailing lists and use them as a resource for both training uh, and networking. Score similar to PTAP, but PTAP's uh, direct mission is helping government contractors. SCORE is simply general business. However, the SCORE offices in this area uh, are primarily focused on government contracting. SBDC, Small Business Development Centers, uh, those are typically within a county or city. Again, a lot of classes and mentors and events um, used by government contractors. Um, you also want to look at your local SBA office. Sometimes they are putting on seminars and events. Again, another great place for matchmaking. Incubators. In the Washington, D.C. metro area, you've got a ton of great incubators here. Uh, everything from uh, Jeff Orism's Eastern Foundry, which focuses on uh, defense sector um, folks, uh, to Capitol Post, which is over in um, uh, Alexandria, Virginia, which focuses on military veterans uh, and helping them with general business as well as government contracting. You can find more organizations on our website under the resources tab and scroll down to resource organizations. The link is there. Next, your capability statement. This is just a one-page overview where you're going to demonstrate your core competencies, what it is that you do and do well, uh, where you have past performance, preferably with government agencies, any contract vehicles that you may have. Uh, and then number four, your set-aside designations. Are you small business, woman-owned, veteran-owned, hub zone, A day, or, or anything else that is going to allow the government to check a box? Those are actually in order of, in my opinion, importance. You certainly do not want to ever lead with your set-aside designation. You want to demonstrate that your company does have a specific expertise and it's not everything under the sun. Other information to be included is your uh, Dun & Bradstreet number, your CAGE code, the NAICS code, uh, your tax ID number. We did a, uh, a short webinar on capability statements in 2017, and the link is there in that resources um, highlighted section there with the slide. OSDBUs. Uh, what are OSDBUs? They are the Office of Small and Disadvantaged Business Utilization. They're found within every federal agency, and they are the advocates for small businesses. Uh, the full list of all the OSDBUs can be found on our website. And these folks will also be having what we'll call an open house or industry days. You can find these open houses listed on FedBizOps. Again, that website's going to be migrating over to SAM.gov uh, eventually. So just make sure that uh, whatever profile settings you have set up on FedBizOps, you will make a note that you'll have to re-establish those on SAM once the new enhanced SAM goes live. At these events, you can certainly find teaming partners. Uh, they could be other small businesses. Sometimes they're large businesses. Uh, the industry days, they will also typically have a forecast of the products or services that that agency is specifically going to be purchasing, uh, and even more specifically, uh, buy purchases that are going to be set aside for small businesses. Your capability statements should be tailored specifically for that agency or the department within the agency uh, that's hosting that industry day. FedBizOps, again, this is migrating over to SAM.gov. Uh, you want to look for solicitations here, uh, but preferably source of thought and RFI, requests for information. As the government is scratching its head thinking about making a purchase or setting up a new program, uh, they will issue something called sources sought. This is exactly what it it is exactly what it says. They are looking for sources 
to help them with a particular opportunity or program or something that they're considering. That is the best time to get in and start building relationships, building partnerships, um, and really fine-tuning your expertise. RFI would kind of be the next stage. They're looking for more detailed information and information about that opportunity. Uh, after that, they will then evaluate uh, the resources that they have, their budget, and go through some other processes and procedures that they have to follow according to the FAR. And then eventually, uh, a couple months later, and that may be 10 months later, it could be 18 months later, that opportunity may then potentially graduate to an RFP. Um, and hopefully, if you have been in there and followed that opportunity from sources sought to RFP, when it does then show up on FedBizOps or SAM.gov, eventually, uh, you are then positioned to respond. Any opportunities above $25,000 must be by the government uh, posted on FedBizOps. The forecast. Uh, by law, the government agencies are required to post the purchases that they are getting uh, ready to make. So you want to understand the, the peaks and the valleys within government purchasing. Uh, the fiscal year runs October 1st to September 30th. So again, Q4, you're going to have the biggest uh, spikes. July, August, September, government has a use it or lose it uh, mentality, meaning that if there's any money left over, they need to spend it. Otherwise, they'll lose that for the next fiscal year. So again, don't respond to every opportunity that you see. Look at these forecasts and plan accordingly. Dedicate your resources, your time, securing outside business development and proposal writing um, resources, and knowing how much they're gonna cost in advance to kind of have them on the bench and plan them into your budget. Uh, we do have actually all of the forecasts listed on our website. Again, the highlighted uh, resource link there would take you directly to that forecast. And here's just a sample of a uh, screenshot of what uh, some of those forecasts and those links look like. And if you drill down, this is a specific one, I believe, for uh, DHS. Uh, they do a fantastic job of um, making all of their information available. Um, so you can see the dollar amount, there's a contract vehicle in place or not. Uh, if there's an incumbent, you've got the, your point of contact there at the government, his or her phone number, uh, and other relevant information. So use that to your advantage to plan which opportunities you're going to hunt versus being reactive. Uh, having these forecasts will help you be proactive and stay on offense. The SBA scorecard, assuming that you are a small business, uh, you want to review the SBA scorecard. This is an annual uh, publication, uh, we'll call it, that comes out where the agencies um, have goals as well as prime contractors that are large also have goals to contract directly with small businesses. So the agencies going direct to small businesses have a 24, approximate 24% goal, and the large contractors uh, have a 36% goal. So again, use this information for your strategy. If an agency has gotten a really uh, high score and for doing work with women-owned uh, hub zone businesses and your women-owned hub zone, pursue that agency, look at their forecast, uh, look at other information as far as who, who else they're contracting with, what's the competitive landscape look like, and then maybe pick an agency that hasn't done well with 8A and hub zone. Uh, and pursue them and use your set-aside uh, designation and certification to help them bring their score up. We've got all of the agency scorecards, again, listed on our website in that uh, resource link. We will make the slides available uh, later today, uh, so you can quickly link or quickly click on these links to get to the information. So further details on the scorecard to set aside uh, currently is that 5% for women, small and disadvantaged, 3% each to hub zone, uh, which is historically underutilized business zone, uh, and then 3% for STVOs, which is the service disabled veteran owned certification. And this is just a snapshot from uh, 2016 as far as the prime contractors and how they fared as far as their uh, subcontracting achievements. Again, use this uh, to your advantage 
And then you've got the agency by agency. Again, all of this is on our website under the resources uh, section, which are uh, pretty easy, quick links to get to. The top 100 vendors. This is a great way to start your subcontracting strategy. Look at the agencies that you believe you should be targeting based on uh, what we covered in the last few slides. And then look at the top 100 vendors for each of those agencies. Uh, you then wanna go to the prime contractor site, meaning this large business, whether it's Lockheed, Northrop, or, or some of the others, and register in on their site as a small business. Because if you contact them, the first question they're gonna ask, or the first thing they're gonna tell you to do is, please go to our website and register as a small business. Well, if you've already done that, you're a step ahead of the game. You then probably wanna take that company's name and look for all of the contracts that they have won that are relevant to your NAICS code and the agencies where you think you have the best uh, opportunity to win. You also wanna keep in mind the new All Small Mentor Protege program, uh, which would mean if you were in a uh, relationship, similar relationship uh, that was a mentor protege relationship with a large business, there is the opportunity if you meet uh, certain requirements that your entity, this joint entity could then be designated as a small business. So you wanna bring something to the table uh, with these vendors and that is something that you could certainly uh, pursue. We do have a webinar on the All Small Mentor Protege Program on our website. So here's uh, what the spreadsheet looks like for the top 100 vendors. This is just a, a snapshot. Uh, the number of contract actions, the dollars obligated, and then the percent of uh, the overall agency total. Um, this one, I believe, is just a snapshot of all, uh, comprehensive look at all of the uh, agencies, and then each worksheet within the spreadsheet will break down every agency. So that way you can be more specific and targeted with the companies that you want to subcontract with. Data and research. There is no market out there like the government sector, meaning that there is so much publicly available data uh, that is available to you. Uh, certainly there are companies out there that will charge uh, a lot of money, uh, subscription-based uh, data aggregators that will pull this data together. You can also do it yourself based on uh, some of this information and links that we've provided. So have a plan, use the data uh, to make intelligent uh, decisions based on factual information. Uh, look at your possible partners and competitors. And again, do your homework before contract, contacting any of these potential partners. FBDS, again, this is gonna be migrating over to SAM, uh, but this is the federal procurement data system. Uh, you can plug in a company name, an agency, an ACE code, uh, pretty much anything under the sun to get some competitive intel. Uh, you can then export that into an Excel spreadsheet and manipulate the data to um, to play with the numbers, whether it's looking at uh, dollars of the contracts or other information. USA Spending, another great website, absolutely free and publicly available. Again, also migrating over to SAM.gov. Another thing you can do is attend events, network, and build relationships. Uh, government's risk adverse, so you want to uh, ensure that they trust you. How can you do that if you're a uh, small company with one or two people? potentially working with some of the large businesses that have names that the government trusts, the Lockheeds, the Northrop's, the Raytheon's, and others. Um, and attending these government-related events. Uh, our good friends over at GovEvents have a fantastic website that you can sort and search for events based on industry, date, location, uh, and a variety of other parameters. So we encourage you to um, subscribe to GovEvents and jump onto their website to find events that would be relevant for you. Contract vehicles, what does everybody think of? Typically GSA schedules, but you wanna make sure that uh, should a contract vehicle be a necessary tool, that it is the right tool, but specifically at the right time. Uh, for example, um, you may be pursuing the schedule, whether it's GSA or another contract vehicle, and there are many, many that are out there uh, either prematurely, um, or it may not even just be in your, your uh, best company's best interest. It could be a liability for you because these are gonna be primarily based on price. 
You also want to make sure that uh, you are going to meet and exceed all of the qualifications. Uh, but even more important than that, I think, is ensuring that your customer actually uses the contract vehicle that you're going to pursue versus build it and they will come and just crossing your fingers, hoping that uh, that is the correct contract vehicle for you. We've got a couple listed on our website under the contract vehicles, and if you need help securing any of those, uh, responding to any of those solicitations, we're more than happy to help. Set aside certifications. Um, again, you want to secure these at the right time. The 8A certification is one that certainly comes to mind. I probably should have put that in red. Uh, this is for uh, economically uh, distressed companies, and um, it's also based on other parameters. However, when companies, most of the time, we feel that companies pursue and secure the 8A certification prematurely. Once you graduate from the 8A program, which is a nine-year program, should you decide to set up another business with a different company name, selling something completely different from what your first company that had the 8A certification was, you cannot any, under any circumstance reapply to get another 8A certification. So it's basically one and done. Um, additionally, the first couple years, you should be winning contracts through your schedule and then around year five, six, seven, you should start looking for partners that are entering the program, strategic partners who understand government contracting and just didn't start their business the day before, who then understand the 8A certification and how to use it. Um, so again, keep that in mind that uh, timing is really uh, very important with that 8A certification. HubZone, uh, historically underutilized business zone. If you're a uh, company is based in an area or headquartered in a hub zone. 35% or more of your employees uh, must also be in a hub zone. Doesn't need to be the same hub zone, but they need to be in a hub zone. Um, and the way that GSA defines employees is anybody that works 40 hours, I'm sorry, SBA defines that as employees that work 40 hours per month. And I did say per month or more. Uh, would qualify as employees. Uh, and there are other certifications as well. I'd always say take the first stab at filling out the application process and then go to a trusted source uh, with help if you need somebody to review what you've put together. Again, use that SBA scorecard then to go back and look at uh, the agencies that have done well with the awarding contracts to any of these set-asides uh, and those that have not. There's multiple associations and organizations, uh, primarily in the DC metro area, but all over the country. Um, this is where you can build relationships with large businesses, other small businesses, somebody that has a certification that you don't, or they have a footprint in an agency that perhaps you don't. Um, we just threw a couple out here, FCA, CCAF, NCMA, APMP, and even your local chambers of commerce will typically have a government division. If you go to our website under the resources tab, we've got multiple um, organizations there, including some of the ones that we mentioned earlier, the PTAPs, the SBDCs, and others. Read and stay informed. Are you subscribed to the government contracting books, blogs, journals, uh, whether it's uh, government executive, government product news, Potomac Tech Wire, uh, and others? Are you signed up for uh, information to be aware of any FAR changes or clauses? A uh, good source of information, if you want a, um, a breakdown on those, is sometimes going on to maybe uh, five to ten government uh, uh, contract attorneys' uh, website. So pick some of the major law firms that are out there, go to their website, scroll down to their government contracts division, and there's typically a blog or a newsletter uh, that you can sign up for. And these folks are well aware of all of the FAR changes, which are going to be the rules of how to do business with the government and how those are going to impact your business. So stay abreast of things that are happening. The more you know, the better equipped you're going to be and more strategic you'll be in doing business with the government. Uh, and so use all this information to make a, uh, a strategic plan. Uh, you want to use the data and information um, versus just taking a guess that, oh, I think my customers will buy from me uh, if I have a GSA schedule or if I was an 8A company. Um, do some homework up front. It's a very long sales cycle. It's very competitive out there. 
um, and you want to know when and how to use your resources, have those people on the bench ready to go for you, know what it's going to cost you uh, roughly so that you can budget for the peaks and the, uh, and the valleys in this um, competitive sector. Uh, you don't want to respond to every RFP. You want to prioritize your opportunities where you've got the greatest chance to win. Um, there are some folks out there that can help you specifically with that and some online tools to use as well. Um, we just wrote a short article on uh, government contractors CPR, leading with your capabilities first and foremost. Don't be everything to everybody. Show that you have done this work in the past. You're going to build trust and credibility that way with a very risk adverse government uh, entity. And then you also want to build relationships both with companies that maybe initially you think are competitors, but perhaps could be a, a great teaming partner. So be open to those types of relationships. The people on the tools, uh, I kind of mentioned uh, some of these as well the proposal writers and telling folks and your legal uh, assistance, recruiting if you're, uh, let's say, in the IT world and the government, uh, you want a contract where the government needs uh, people on site, uh, you want to have those resources available to you. Uh, on the other side, we've got the software considerations. So just the tools that you need to run your business, whether it's your simple uh, finance and accounting, uh, managing the projects, uh, and there's a host of uh, software companies that can help you with uh, some of the bullet points we have listed here, as well as many other uh, components of government contracting. So some concluding remarks. Again, build relationships. That's really what it does come down to, um, both direct with the government and then indirect with your uh, large business primes and potential small business or uh, large partners. You always want to refine your strategy. If you keep doing the same thing day in, day out, you're not getting anywhere, you may want to make some tweaks. Uh, certainly come to us for help. We can uh, prepare a market analysis report that will show you which agencies are buying your products, when they purchase them, how they purchase them, what contract vehicles may or may not be right for you, and other information. Use those acquisition forecasts. Uh, the government's basically telling you what they're going to buy, when they're going to buy, how much they're going to spend. If they're using a contract vehicle, is it set aside for a small business? Uh, that's your, your target right there. Uh, and you always want to continue to look at new contract vehicles that, uh, that may help you. And this is just a, an ongoing process. Um, refining your strategy is not a, a static thing. It's certainly an ongoing um, evolution to your company as you stay abreast of industry trends and changes. So last slide here is uh, there's no one way that, uh, that you're going to win business. There's no silver bullet. It really just takes uh, day in, day out, hard work, grit, lots of time. The folks that are really killing it aren't doing anything that hasn't been mentioned here. Um, you know, they've built the relationships, they've got the expertise, they've got the past performance, uh, they're out there banging on the doors, they're going to the networking events, their inbox is flooded with uh, news about um, new changes in government contracting, events, uh, different strategies they can use, whether it's the all small mentor protege or, or other uh, components that may help them uh, be more strategic with their business. So thanks for joining us today. Uh, next week we are covering uh, the HUBZone certification and uh, the full list of webinars is on our website under the webinar tab. Uh, today's webinars, uh, both 12 o'clock and today's 1230, have been recorded and the slides will be available later today. Any questions, feel free to send us an email or give us a call. Contact information is here on the slide. Thanks everybody.